Steve Hindy wants to put a stop to hunting in America. But when I first met him, he wasn't talking about hunting. He was on a rescue mission to save two bears. This whole pit is a problem because bears do not like to be looked down on. Steve believes that hunting will end the moment we begin to understand and respect animals, which is why, for months now, he's been waging a campaign against Baylor University in Texas. He claims the school is mistreating its two bear mascots. As you might imagine, university officials are none too happy with Steve's accusations. We meet all the federal and state regulations for housing these animals. They're under extraordinary veterinary care, care and we, we are considering ways to improve the habitat for the bears. Yeah. We're, we're, we're not claiming perfection on this, yeah. but for, to continue to be hammered by these people and... How, how is he hammering you? Well, the, go look at his websites. Have you seen his websites? BaderBearAbuse.com. I mean, that, that kind of approach doesn't get anywhere with people. I mean, that, that just, that's attack. Yes. Ironically, that attacker, Steve Hindy, is a former hunter. He grew up hunting and fishing in the woods and lakes of Minnesota. So you were a hunter. You accepted that as something that you did and, and enjoyed, I suppose, right? Oh, yeah. I loved it. I mean, it's a whole... It's, it's more than a lifestyle. It's a, it's a frame of mind. But in 1990, Steve observed a hunting scene so cruel, it changed him forever. What I really saw was an almost unspeakable cruelty to animals. Farm-raised pigeons were held in traps until the so-called hunters were ready. Then the birds were released and shot at close range. It went beyond just what was happening to the animals. I was just appalled at the, the use of kids in this, kids as young as six years old, maybe younger. They would take those birds and they would stomp them or pull their heads off. just slam them alive into 55 gallon barrels in the course of the day they would kill maim wound and cause this incredible unspeakable cruelty to some 7,000 animals Steve captured the cruelty on videotape and demanded that the owners of the game ranch change their ways and they said you're no different than us who do you think you are and I said, well, I am different than you. I don't, you know, I don't believe in this. And I said, you kill animals, you're the same as us. Don't kid yourself. Over the next year, I begrudgingly and fighting with what my inner voice was telling me, I had to agree. They were right all along. I was no different than them. And I did not want to be in their camp. During the next year, Steve decided he could no longer take joy in a sport that caused so much suffering. What's your proof that they suffer? They cry. They, the way they struggle to live, they don't just lay down and die. When they're dragging themselves by their front legs, pulling themselves on the ground, it's, it's a horrible, messy thing. Are there still people who are such Neanderthals or, or are in such denial that they refuse to admit that when these animals have the very same reactions as we do, that they don't feel very much like we do. It was time to unload the boat and all the equipment and the guns and everything, and it was, it was tough. I'm not gonna say it was easy. So Steve, an imaginative man, began dreaming of ways to deliver his anti-hunting message directly to the fields, forests, and duck blinds of the hunter. The paraglider is brightly colored and the, the motor is very loud and the geese and the ducks could see it from miles and miles away. So you were like dive bombing? They had their decoys up there and so I'd come down I'd just fly over the decoys and the prop, the prop thrust would knock them down. The stunt landed Steve in jail, but the former hunter had found a new prey and wasn't about to let go. The gun has been replaced by the video camera. The, uh, the target animal has been replaced by the target animal abuser. And to show his video, Steve spent $180,000 of his own money designing the tiger, a sort of movie theater on wheels. 
this gives people an opportunity to see something with their own eyes and make their own decision and that's to me that's the american way the truck projects images of animal abuse captured by steve's cameras we claim to be nonviolent, and then millions and millions of us spend billions and billions on guns and other assorted weapons of war and go into the field and make make war on those who have no defenses so many of the hunters that we talk to um, have mentioned that they really feel that hunting is a is a, in the genes it's it's in the blood it's in the marrow of being human to be a predator do you believe that i believe that in some cases that that is true um, but i also think that you can redirect those energies during the past decade, Steve's methods have proven to be as effective as they are controversial. After a 70-year history, the pigeon hunt in Higgins, Pennsylvania closed down. He also helped ban turkey shoots in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. And the rocket netting of deer in Illinois. To reduce the deer population, government teams would trap the deers in nets and later shoot them in the head with bolts. These are the trophies of a former hunter who's been born again, a conversion brought on by the suffering he's witnessed. For Steve, the moment we allow ourselves to feel superior to animals is the moment we begin accepting our right to kill them or mistreat them, which brings us back to Steve's current target, Baylor University, and why he's fighting to free the school's two mascots from this enclosure. One of the things that he claims is that, in fact, speakers and parties take place right here on the, on the bear cage. Is that true? There is a skit that's held so weekly, he, but no parties. No parties, no music. Well, there, there, is is music. there may be music, but if you came back here and observed the bears during pit, they don't blink an eye. But Steve's cameras tell a different story. We showed these images to Baylor officials, and they issued this statement. We see no credible evidence in this footage that establishes that this environment is making the bears neurotic. Tonight, these images will be rolling on the video screens of the tiger, sometimes triggering jeers or rocks, sometimes just a conversation about animal rights. Bears don't like to be viewed from above. They need darkness during the night. Either way, Steve Hindy is still pursuing his prey. This is hunting like, this is getting the satisfaction that I think hunters really long for, but it's, it's so much more satisfying to save lives than to take them. It's easy to take them, but saving them, no, that's a thrill. What do you think it is that has triggered you emotionally to, to pursue this with such, you know, such a commitment? I'm still a hunter.